Assalamu alaikum everyone welcome back to another video I hope you're having a wonderful day so in today's video I want to basically talk about a specific book that I've read a few years ago and that has actually helped me set, change my mindset about how I see money like what I do with my money and they change my basically almost outlook when it came to investing when it came to saving when it came to relationship with money and so on and i want to share with you guys some of the key points that i took away from this book but before we do that if you can join join us on the patreon account that would be absolutely amazing and that will really genuinely help your channel it will cost you about 15p per day you get access to the discord where a lot of brothers are sharing good practices you get basically real-time buys and sales that i'm making so every time i buy and sell i will basically share in the groups you get access to the free, um, the family portfolio updates as well and the dividend trackers the etf trackers and the sharia in compliant investing ebook and if you don't want to do any of this of course you just like the video subscribe to the channel let me know if you have any questions inshallah so in today's video i want to focus on the tip basically the psychology of money book this money um this money this book was written by morgan hassel and one of the things i've learned basically and one one of the things that book emphasizes is um basically the they explores this idea of basically the complex relation between psychology and finance so psychology and the finance insight okay he argues that basically understanding one's behavior and emotion and, and emotion is is crucial for achieving financial success which is really good once you understand like the relationship you have money and you understand your behavior and your emotions towards money it genuinely changes um your sec basically your financial success and he emphasizes that financial success decisions are not solely based on uh, rationality or logic, but heavily influenced by psychology, psychological factors such as fear, greed, and so on. And by reading this book, I've read it a few years ago, and I kill, I love it. I just go back to it, reading again and again. And the reason I do that is just kind of re remind myself some of the important part of this book. And genuinely, I've read so many books over the last five six years basically or maybe seven years and this one was one of the books that may change my relationship with money and how i actually see money and hopefully it will do that for you as well if you've never read this book and you are starting your investment journey you're still young you're still learning about money or maybe you just got your first job whatever or even if you're in your 40s and you still have not have a great relationship with, uh, with money i i will definitely recommend this okay this has so many lessons on wealth generation basically talking about greed talking about happiness and all of these things and i want to share with you guys five key takeaways from this book in today's video inshallah if you like this this type of content please like the videos that you can by just doing that you're helping me so much inshallah right the first thing i want to talk about today is the financial decisions are personal okay so don't compare yourself to others everyone has different experiences and priorities that shape their financial choices now yours is different to mine so what works for someone also might not work for you so don't copy someone else's lifestyle don't copy someone else's decisions someone might decide to i don't know invest certain things or buy certain things that doesn't mean you should copy them you should do that at the same time so do not compare yourself with anybody else you know and we, and this day and age is quite difficult to do these things because you see when it comes to social media and using socials it, there's so many people out there that are just posting all sorts of things and people see that and they want to copy it so and so got basically a brand new car brand new trainers brand new this and what do we do we actually try to copy that so your financial decisions are very very personal to you now the other thing as well the flip side of it is sometimes people will tell you you know you need this much money to retire da, 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 da. my financial goals might be slightly different my you know expenses might slightly be different to yours and so on you know i might have a family you might not have a family i've got a friend who is actually you know a single man in his late 40s he's got mashallah quite financial fin um, you know wealth side of it he's actually built quite of if, portfolio of properties and so on he likes to invest and he's a single man and recently he decided to retire and i was having a conversation with him and he said Do you know what if i was in your shoes and i had family i don't think i would be able to retire right now but as a single man who's in his 40s 
I'm okay and I know I actually make enough money for me to live off every single month and I have enough so and we was that's something that we're going to talk about towards the end of the video but just your the financials basically decisions are basically yours okay so don't copy anybody else the next one is focus on savings okay building wealth is more about saving consistently than making a lot of money and genuinely that's really the most important thing um for me that i've learned it really early on so if you're consistent and you're saving every single month certain amount of money completely automated and so on okay living below your means and avoiding lifestyle inflation or basically and so on then these are for me the key points lifetime inflation what i mean by that is you know you get a all of a sudden you get over like a bonus or something or you basically get promotion don't upgrade your life okay don't all of a sudden start buying more expensive things or move out your house or upgrade your car or whatever that you know wherever you've got right now is good enough if it's not good enough maybe do a little bit here and there but don't just in straight away inflate your entire lifestyle to the point where you can it's no longer sustainable because you never where's the ceiling from if that you know from there onwards you're just going to be keep going up and up and keep basically buying more stuff and you're going to you know be in that right race if you like okay so think about your focusing on your savings and so on the next one is really important one and this is the one we always talk about when we talk about investing and so on and this is the power of compounding so time and consistent savings are your greatest allies now savings investing i kind of use it interchangeably okay even a small amount of money can grow significantly over long term basically thanks to the compound interest now if you look at this I mean, when this book was written okay um warren buffett so 81.5 billion of warren buffett is basically 84 billion at the time of um publishing this um uh, book basically came after his 65th birthday which is absolutely crazy the guy is now what 99 or whatever he is he was about 65 when he actually made that 80 basic majority of you know that money so the compound um, the compound effect or interest is really one of the most important things that we need to understand as investors and i'm going to show you very quickly something i'm sure you've seen me use this the compound interest calculator okay so imagine your initial investment of say for example i'm gonna use mine so between the two portfolios it's just slightly over one hundred and ten thousand. okay so i'll go with hundred ten thousand. my monthly contribution let's just go with one thousand for now okay for the next 10 years 10 years i want to do this okay so over the next 10 years normally the s p 500 returns about seven percent to ten percent so i'm going to go with seven percent for now we're talking about over a period of time 10 15 20 years the return from the s p 500 we're looking about seven percent or higher okay and then we're just going to do this annually let's calculate this let's see how much we will have after 10 years okay we will have 382,000 pounds. So the this green line at the bottom is basically my total contribution. So this is what I've added. And the top one here is the future value, the 7% growth, if you like. So we're looking about over $380,000, right? Now, imagine if I said, you know what? Right now, I like to maximize ISR account. So I'm just going to pretend that all of this is in pounds, right? I add about 1,666 pounds every single month because my ISO account is about twenty thousand pounds every single year so that roughly works out one thousand six hundred sixty six pounds and that's my current portfolio uh, value this is for the next 10 years that's exactly what i'm going to do for seven percent return and that gives us almost you know five hundred thousand pounds now let's say you know what i want to retire when i'm you know 50 for example Okay, so next 14 years, I'm going to continue investing and my 50th birthday, I'm going to stop working. Okay, let's see what happens. I would have about £734,000. You might be thinking, okay, it's a lot of money to start with at the beginning. Da, da, da. Again, by the way, this a lot of that comes from the company, as you can see there. So my basically, my contribution is um, 380 89 and the rest of it is basically the comp basically the seven percent 
okay now you might be thinking that's a lot of money and i am going to start with one thousand pounds or dollars whatever and every single month i'm going to add 500 pounds and i'm going to do maybe i'm in my 20s and i'm going to do this for the next 30 years with the seven percent okay so you may be in your 20s and you want to do this for the next 30 years so when you're 50 you want to take that money you look at this you would actually make 500 or closer to six hundred thousand pounds so the compounding effect is very, very basically important part. And the longer you invest and the longer you stay in the stock market, the longer you invest in, the basically the better for you. So keep going, keep being, you know, consistently up, basically putting more money into the market as much as you can. And of course, that will pay off in the, in the long run. The next thing is luck and risk are big factors. So this is one, one of the things that the, um, the author talks about in the book. And he basically says financial success often involves a fair amount of basically luck alongside skill and effort. So you need a bit of luck. And he talks about Bill Gates. So Bill Gates went to one of the only schools in the United States or in the world, for example, that had a computer. So his parents were able to send him to a school where there was a computer and nobody else in this world had access to computers. And this man basically taught himself and basically went to that school every single day in that basic section of the school where there was a um, computer and learned basically how to program. And right now, one of the reasons he is one of the most successful entrepreneurs and whatever businessman and billionaires, whatever you want to call him, is because of that opportunity. So you need a bit of a luck. Okay, so embrace calculated risks and understand that unexpected events like his situation can significantly impact your finance. So sometimes it can go the basically the you know the right way or wrong way, whichever it is. You just need to be you know have a bit of luck and of course you have to take element of risk now my risk if i want to tell you right now is the fact that i'm actually investing in the stock market because there are a bit of risk involved any of these companies could go to zero tonight but at least it's a calculated risk i'm not, I'm not putting my entire net worth onto this and this is why i kind of refuse these days to invest in the cryptocurrencies because i genuinely don't know much well i do know much about it but i don't really trust it because there's no underlying assets i don't know what i'm buying i'd rather put that money into properties or stocks and other things that are a bit more tangible in my opinion okay so again you need a bit of luck and you have to take some risks okay and number four we're looking at basically freedom gaining control over your time and for me this is probably one of the most important things more than your salary more than the size of your house more than the prestige of your job control over doing what you want to do when you want to do it with the people you want to do with okay is the broadest lifestyle variable that makes people happy and i genuinely believe that more than anything else having that freedom to do the things that you want to do if it means you want to spend time with your family with your friends you know taking your children to school every single morning bringing them back going to the basically pray at the masjid every single prayers whatever it is that financial freedom okay that's what you need that taking control over your time no one is expecting you to clock in 9 a.m and then leave basically 5 p.m staying after work and so on and doing this and that so that's important and this is the reason why we're investing if you don't have if you don't know why you're investing make this your why okay to be to be able to take back that time and do what you want to do and spend time with your family and friends because that's what life is about that's what makes us happy right so do that and finally the last thing we're going to talk about is define your enough and this is really important this is very crucial because we human we are very greedy creatures okay when we get hundred thousand we want a two hundred thousand five hundred thousand there's always someone else who's got better things than us so what we need to do is true wealth isn't just about having a lot of money it's about having enough to achieve the lifestyle you desire and if that means when you hit certain amount of whatever money that's it you're gonna have to stop there and say you know what i've achieved my goal i'm now gonna live my life and enjoy it rather than just to keep going because the, remember what's gonna happen is if you keep moving the goalpost every single year and say okay i've achieved this one i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do you're gonna continuously basically be in that rat race so when you've reached your enough don't walk away from it of course i'm not saying stop investing or whatever i'm just saying no you for example if if all you need is 300 000, 300 pounds or 200 pounds every single month as a passive income and you've achieved that okay 
then alhamdulillah then that's the time to say okay alhamdulillah i achieved what i wanted to achieve now i'm going to do this and this and other things that you want to do with your life maybe you wanted to travel start traveling okay that's basically what i mean and if you don't have that you're just going to feel empty you know for the rest of your life and you're going to continue doing something that you probably don't want to do so that's all i wanted to share with you guys today i hope this sort of uh, videos help let me know in the comment section if they do help because a lot of these things is are things that um the reasons why i keep investing in the stock market the thing the reasons why i actually stay focused on things that i'm doing i, I ignore the naysayers i ignore every all the negatives out there i have a goal i have a plan and i'm gonna achieve it inshallah i'm gonna do my best if i do it alhamdulillah if i can't do it we'll see what happens okay so that's all I want to share with you guys. I hope you're enjoying this content. Please, if you are, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Like I always say to you guys, it takes a lot of time to put these videos together. I would genuinely appreciate it if you can, you know, like that the videos and subscribe to the channel. Have a wonderful day. Assalamu alaikum.